Beloved, as we gathered together last Sunday to commemorate one year of COVID-19 and one year of our worship becoming digital, we participated in public mourning. We felt something together. Some of us ruined our mascara. I was the one sitting in this little Zoom square right here, sobbing openly. And during that final Kyrie, it was sung so beautifully by our choir, something within me cracked open. I got to really cry with you all. It was one of those cries where the peak of my forehead ached with the tension of the tears and the pain. And as I was thinking about it after the fact, I, I realized there was a specificity to those tears last week. While I was crying, I was drawn to the face and the laugh of a particular nurse I know, a coworker from back when I worked in primary care, Antonio. Antonio is the, he's the most unsettling genius I've ever known. He's the kind of person who would punch you right on the left arm and then kiss you on the right cheek and there would seem to be no reason for either of them. You're never quite sure what he's gonna say next. But every quip and jab and strange utterance would always be accompanied by this twinkle in his eye. Because Antonio cares. He loves deeply and fiercely. He's just not the sort of person who will say it out loud all the time. He's been on my mind a lot since a year and a week ago because as a critical care nurse, Antonio was thrust into work and thrust into a world he didn't ask for. Over the last year, he managed a team of nurses. He cared for COVID patients directly. And he took on responsibility far beyond his training. He just had to. Because for Antonio, there was only one way forward. And when he and I were catching up a few months ago, he texted me the following words that continue to hang in the air around me. He said, I don't, think I'll ev it, I don't think it'll ever be over for me. I don't think I'll ever unsee things I see every day or unfeel things I feel. Antonio has been changed by the past year. He knows it. He names it. And what of us? What does the 53rd week of virtual worship promise us? Are we changed? Well, there's the visual markers. I'm certain I'm not the only one with these little lines growing between my eyes where I've held on to some of my worry. And these, right underneath my eyes, these are the tattoos of sleep that I've lost as I try and keep consistent rest in sight. Many of us are wearing our fatigue today. and We're continuing to show up as Antonio does. I see you parents. You know the look of sleepiness as well as any of us. For Antonio has said words on behalf of many of us. We're different in ways that we celebrate, but we can't unfeel the pain. And as I think of this survival, as this level of honesty, this new resilience, I'm taken to that Lenten place of right now. We're here and we're waiting. We're our full exhausted selves and we know that resurrection is on its way, both and hurry up and wait. So while we're here, while we're still here, it might be a good time to bring in one of those strange and beautiful church words, covenant. Covenant is one of those words that visits us, one of those words that takes roost. It's a relationship that lives and breathes, it reveals and is always connected to the divine. Covenant is and will be at the exact same time. And a covenant is bigger than a promise. It changes, it grows, it moves in two directions. It's not just a one-way street like a blessing. But what is it? How do we live it? What do we covenant? 
what lived in promises are being made by God and that we make to God and to one another? And how might they change? Our passage from Jeremiah this morning is known to be the only reference of the new covenant in the Hebrew Bible. And while many Christian scholars and Christian communities interpret and reinterpret Hebrew scripture to reflect and anticipate Christ's life, this text today stands firmly on its own as a Jewish prophetic voice, speaking of God's relationship to the house of Israel. We can't immediately presume in good conscience that this particular scriptural covenant is solely ours as Christians. But we at West End remember and echo and honor this new covenant with each cup in our sacrament of communion. We say this cup is the new covenant sealed in Christ's love. The invitation of the cup as we worship reflects our new covenant, that which quenches our thirst, that which nourishes our weary places, and that which is a testament to Christ's love and sacrifice. We're going to be back in our sanctuary sharing a communion meal at some point in the near future. That day is coming. And we have the opportunity now to decide how this new covenant in our sanctuary will look. We can decide where its limits are. We can, just, we can have discussions that we must have in order to honor and sanctify it. And we can find out how it is to be lived. In her intro to new members at her former congregation, the House for All Sinners and Saints, Reverend Nadia Bowles Weber would often say the following. This church will disappoint you. I will fail to meet your expectations. I'll say something stupid and hurt your feelings. It's not a matter of if, it's when. We will disappoint you. That part was so important, she said it twice. I believe West End gathered community that any new covenant that we make together will and must involve a healthy understanding of disappointment as a baseline, as a given. As any institution will, at some point, church disappoints. And trust me, I know what it's like to be disappointed in church and to choose to still be here. It's not easy to name it, and to face it, and to know it. But to my mind, this is the gift of covenantal relationship. It's not us following without scrutiny, and it's not us being so fed up that we walk away and disengage. Rather, it's this joyful dance, this life and this growth right in the middle. And as Reverend Bowles Weber describes, and as Antonio chooses to find new ways of keeping on in his work, so can we. There are some things we know for certain will continue on. One being the vow to protect the safety and the privacy as our, of our young people. The Zoom passwords and the waiting rooms and all of these digital protective measures will be replaced by sign-in lists. And our policy around two teachers per room as we had before in our building. And we will keep committed to respecting boundaries. And we will hold ourselves accountable in love, dignity, and respect. That won't change. And we still hold fast to our core values of inclusion and, and extravagant welcome. For we, as a community, believe in the dignity of all, of each. And we denounce xenophobia and racism in all its forms, especially as we stand with those grieving this week's unspeakable act of violence in Atlanta. New covenants will not mean compromising what we know to be true. For there's truth. Truth as jubilant as children who know that they're safe. Truth is concrete as the inherent worth of our Asian American congregants, our loved ones, our neighbors. 
And then we ask, where will God be? Where will God be in our rock solid truths in these new covenants? The words of Jeremiah 31 verse 35 reminds us. Thus says the Lord, who gives the sun for light by day and the fixed order of the moon for stars for light by night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord of hosts is God's name. Beloved, scripture reminds us we're not doing this by ourselves. God will keep the stars right where they need to be. And God continues to walk alongside us to create new things, no matter where we are, no matter if we're tired. And this is what makes covenant unique, not just a promise. Remember how I said a few minutes ago that it's not just a one-way street? Well, covenant is a bit more nuanced than that. God is always the initiator of covenant. And we as community, we as people of faith, we respond. We turn our faces to God, toward the wellspring of life and grace and mercy that will never fail. Like the universe expanding around us, or the sun rising each morning, we have the opportunity and the responsibility to respond rightly and to give over to God what we cannot hold. From our morning last week to today, and what we learned today from Antonio's wisdom and his commitment to his vocation, even when it hurts, to the day that we return to our building and celebrate and worship together. And on behalf of these generations to come, for what we don't know yet, for these generations and big mysteries long after our time here on earth, Friends, we may not know what's coming next, but we know where our help comes from. Big question, million dollar question. How will we look upon our return to our sanctuary? Let's decide together. Our work today and in the days to come is to decide how we want to return to our space, not just when. So take heart. Something new is being made. Amen.